Great Lakes Prepping here. It's canning day once again, and today we're making up a batch of red pepper relish. Great for spreading on sandwiches or spooning over top of chicken or steak. This condiment is delicious and super easy to make. So we're going to jump right in and go through every step of making and canning this red pepper relish. So real quick, let's take a look at our ingredient lineup. First, of course, we have bell peppers, lots of bell peppers. I'm using 10 pretty good sized bell peppers and most of them are red. I got a couple orange thrown in there. You could really go with any combination of red, yellow, orange. I like to go mostly red because it makes my finished product look more like what I would expect a red pepper relish to look like. Then we've got a couple medium sized yellow onions, one jalapeno, some white sugar, and then some mustard seed, celery seed, paprika, kosher salt, apple cider vinegar, and white vinegar. Now I could have gone all apple cider or all white, but I think that going half and half on them makes a nice balance. So that's what I do. And one last quick little note, I am using one jalapeno just to give it a little touch of a zing, but I will say that I prefer to use something called a cherry pepper. Cherry peppers are little red peppers that have a little bit of heat, not too much. They're kind of sweet, very tasty. Problem is, is they're almost impossible to find fresh around here. You can find them in jars that have already been pickled, but to find them fresh, you can't get them in all places or all the time. So my substitute is a fresh jalapeno. So the first thing I have to do is cut up my peppers and onions. I'll get rid of the stem and the seeds. Now most of this is going to get chopped up pretty finely for our relish, but some of it will be set aside and will actually go into the food processor for a short amount of time just to kind of help round out the texture and the consistency of this relish. Okay, so again, we've got three of the bell peppers, half of one of the onions, and the whole jalapeno just cut into some big chunks and thrown in the food processor. Now we're just gonna pulse this a few times until this is pretty well chopped up. And we're not looking for a complete puree, just something between finely chopped and pureed. And that right there is about what I'm looking for. So now we're just going to mix this all in with our finely chopped vegetables. And for this next step, I'm actually going to upgrade to my great big stainless steel bowl. Just because it's going to give me some more room to work. And now we're going to bring in that kosher salt. You could also use canning salt or cheese salt, just not your ordinary iodized table salt. And we're going to sprinkle this all over top. And then give this all a really good mix. And here's the reason we do this. This is part of an important step that's going to draw a lot of the moisture out of these vegetables. We're essentially pickling all these vegetables into what will become our final relish product. And when making relishes and even pickles, it's very easy to end up with a mushy product. But there's a few things we can do to mitigate that and end up with a more crisp and firm final vegetable relish product. And the first is using salt to draw out a lot of that moisture. The second step is to keep our vegetables as cold as possible. So while we have to let this sit here for a good hour or two and do its thing, we also want to keep it very cold. So the next step is actually pouring a whole bunch of ice right over top of this. And now I just have to wait. I'll let this sit here for somewhere between one and two hours. And by then, much of this ice will be melted, but that's okay. It's all going to be very cold. And then we're going to move on to the next step. All right, well, it's been about an hour and a half. And the ice that's not quite melted yet has conveniently all sort of froze together in one big block. So that's going to make it pretty easy to just lift this whole thing off of there. And the rest of this ice I'll just pick off of here and throw in the sink. But you can already see how much liquid is released out of these vegetables. I mean, this is just swimming in liquid at this point. So after we get this ice out of here, we have to strain all this really well. Now there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. You can of course use a big colander, but we want to get most of that excess liquid out of there. So rather than having to try to squeeze and wring handfuls of this stuff, I actually find it the easiest to use one of these big strainer bags. So I'm going to take this over to the sink and kind of transfer all this into this bag and then I'll let it drain, give it a little squeeze and we'll move on. 
I, just to make it kind of convenient to see in this video, I'm just going to hold this thing over this big bowl and kind of show you how much liquid's coming out of here. Obviously, when I transferred all of these vegetables in over the sink, most of that liquid just ran off into the sink. But, you know, you can see there's just still a ton draining out of here. And uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of a squeeze, but I don't want to completely smash all this into mush. So I'm mostly going to let just gravity do its thing. And I'll just kind of keep doing it until... Uh, so there's not really a steady stream of liquid coming out anymore. And real quick, something that I almost forgot to mention was that after I transferred all these vegetables into this bag, I gave everything a really good rinse with cold water. You know, I sprinkled quite a bit of that kosher salt over top for the moisture removal phase, and that's just gonna end up making my relish too salty, so you really wanna give all of that just a quick rinse. I did it right here in the bag, uh, kinda as it started draining off into the sink. You don't have to go too crazy, just a quick rinse with some fresh cold water. Now we're going to move over to the stove and start getting our brine ready so we can actually make this relish. But first I want to talk about my jars and my hot water bath canner real quick. Now I've got my pint jars in the canner, I've got the heat on, and I want to bring the temperature of this water up, maybe almost to a boil. And I've said this in a lot of videos, but I'm going to recap it again. The sort of old-fashioned recommendations for hot water bath canning said that you should boil your jars to sanitize them. But the more modern recommendations says that you don't absolutely have to boil your jars to sanitize them if you're going to be processing them for at least 10 minutes. Nevertheless, I still wanna bring the temperature of those jars up quite a bit because I'm gonna be pouring piping hot liquid in the form of my relish and brine into them. So I don't wanna start off with freezing cold jars, and once those jars are filled with hot liquid, I don't even want to start off with freezing cold water in the canner. So we're going to have sort of hot jars with hot liquid in them and put them into a hot canner, and doing all of that's going to really minimize any risk of jars breaking. So we're going to let these get heated up in here as we move on and start making the brine. So I'm just going to get my heat on to about medium high, and we're going to just start adding our other ingredients. That's one cup of white vinegar, one cup of apple cider vinegar, one and a half teaspoons mustard seed, one teaspoon celery seed, two teaspoons paprika, and two cups of white sugar. Now we'll give this all a preliminary stir and we wanna let this come up to a boil and just kinda of keep stirring and heating until all that sugar is completely dissolved in. Now I probably didn't need to use a pot quite this big, but you know, I always like to give myself plenty of room to work and make a mess, so that's gonna work just fine. All right, our solution is just starting to bubble and come up to a boil, so we're gonna go ahead and carefully transfer all the vegetables into the pot. I'm gonna give this all a good stir to mix everything together, and then we just have to let this come back up to a boil. Once this starts just boiling again, we're gonna reduce the heat to a simmer. All right, now we're at a nice low simmer and we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes. And after that, the relish is done and ready to can. All right, our relish is done simmering and now we're gonna take our jars out of the canner and move them over to the counter. So being that these are still quite hot, Filled with hot water, I'm gonna use my jar lifter tool to carefully empty the water out of them and move them over to the counter. And we're just about ready to start filling these jars with our relish, but first there's one more step that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add just a little bit of something called calcium chloride to each jar. Now if you're not familiar with calcium chloride, it's the exact same thing as a brand name product called Pickle Crisp. But rather than buying the expensive bottles of Pickle Crisp, I just buy sort of a bulk bag of the thing that Pickle Crisp is, which is calcium chloride. This step is completely optional, but it's just another one of those measures that can help make your relish, or in the case of pickles, your pickles, less likely to be mushy, have a little bit more of a bite to it. So again, optional, but for good measure, I like to use it. So for pint jars, it just needs one eighth of a teaspoon. Quart jars, go one quarter of a teaspoon. Now how I wanna go about filling these is by first filling the jars mostly with the more solid vegetables. So using my canning funnel and this big kind of slotted spoon thing, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill these up, leaving myself a half inch of head space, which I can fine tune in a moment.
All right, so I had just enough of those vegetables to fill up four pint jars, and now I'm gonna use a ladle and spoon over top some of that brine solution and fill these up to the top, leaving that half inch head space. You can really kind of eyeball the, the vegetables as long as that liquid level is where you want it, you're gonna be good. All right, now I'm gonna use my little debubbler slash headspace measuring tool and just kind of make sure that my headspace is where I want it. So using the little half inch notch on the tool, I'll just kind of run it around the rim of the jar and it looks like I may need to do a little fine tuning. I need to take just a tiny bit out of this jar. It's looking pretty good. Probably add just a half a spoonful back into this jar. And now with that same tool, we're gonna to use the other end and debubble. And that really just means kind of pushing this tool into the jar and running it all around the inner walls to try to dislodge any rogue air bubbles that might be trapped in there. We just wanna to try to get any stubborn bubbles to the surface so they can escape before we seal this thing up. And now the last step before we put on our lids and that's to wipe the rims of the jars. It's very important to really thoroughly clean the edges of these jars because you don't want any residue of that food or anything else getting in between the seal and the glass. Otherwise that can lead to a failed seal and an unsuccessful canning. All right, and finally we're ready for our lids. And just like with the jars themselves, the conventional recommendation was that you boiled your lids to sanitize them and soften up the rubber gasket. But in modern times, the recommendation is actually that you don't boil them because it could risk damaging the rubber seal. However, it's still perfectly okay to simmer them or heat them up in some warm water, which I still do possibly just out of habit, but I can't help but feel like that's still kind of the right way to do it, even if technically you don't have to. I feel like it helps that rubber seal just start to soften up the littlest amount when it's forming that seal. Anyway, I'll use my little magnetic lid grabber thing here, put those lids in place. And now for the rings. We're just gonna screw these down finger tight. There's no need to completely crank them on, just tight enough to get the job done. And now we're moving back over to the canner. So again, the contents of these jars are hot. The water in the canner is still pretty hot. So we're gonna use the jar tool to set these jars back in without burning our hands. And this is gonna be no problem with just four pint jars, but I like to make sure that the jars are not touching one another or the outside walls of the canner. When you've got something like six or seven quart jars, that can start to be a little trickier, but for this, it's gonna be no problem at all. You can see I've got at least a solid inch of water above the level of the jars. You want them completely submerged. And then we're gonna put the lid on and crank the heat back onto high. So what I need to do from here is let that water come up to a full rolling boil. At that time, the processing has officially begun. Now for pints, we have to process for 10 minutes. If I was doing quarts, I'd process for 15 minutes. It makes no difference if you use quarts or pints or wide mouth or regular mouth. I just happen to use regular mouth pint jars for this because that's gonna work just fine and I've got lots of them lying around. So we're gonna let this come up to that rolling boil and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, so we're at a full rolling boil and so we can officially start the timer because the processing time has begun. Okay, 10 minutes is up and the heat is off. Processing is now completed, and I'm just gonna let these jars sit in the canner for a few minutes, let that temperature just start to come down a little before I move the jars over to the counter. And there we have it, four beautiful pints of fresh pickled red pepper relish. Now all I have to do from here is nothing. I need to just let these jars sit here on the counter for several hours until they come completely down to room temperature. And over the next little while, I'll start to hear the lids of these jars popping. It probably won't take too long, 
maybe in the next five or 10 minutes. That popping means the lid has been sucked inward and is now considered sealed. And as always, if any of the lids on these jars do not pop and are therefore not sealed, I have to consider that particular jar's canning not successful. It doesn't happen often, but it happens once in a while to everyone. You might get a bum lid or something just didn't go perfectly. If that happens, it's not a big deal. You can either reprocess that jar, get a new lid on there, put it back in the canner, reprocess it for 10 more minutes. But me, on the odd occasion that that happens, I just generally grab that jar, once it's cooled down, stick it in the fridge and use it before any of the other jars. It should be good in the fridge for about as long as you'd expect any jar of relish to be good in the fridge. As for the jars that do seal, which I hope and expect, in my case, it will be all of them. Once they're cooled down, I'll take those rings off, stick them in the pantry, and then I can use them whenever I want. So that's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future canning videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.